Hey everyone, this is Mark with At Tech, and in this video, we're gonna be doing a video that I've been wanting to do for a very long time. This is a recap of everything we've done to the networking in this house. This has been something that's been going on for several months. It started way back when I built my PFSense router, not knowing exactly what I was gonna do it for, and it ended finally with the server rack tour and the install of ethernet in our house. All of the videos leading up to this one will be linked in a playlist up there for you guys to watch before you watch this one. In this video, I wanna do a recap of everything that happened, how it came together and what it looks like. So as you can see right here, we are in my garage. This is where the server rack lives. We take a look down here, you can see the server rack right there on the floor. Don't mind the power cable for the light. This is the central location for all of our networking equipment. This is everything that we use for data, for internet, our servers are down here, our router is down here, the switch, everything we use is right here. We made a whole entire video about the rack, what's in it, why stuff's in it, and what everything is for, so definitely check that video out. I'm not gonna go in depth into that today, but I do want to show you one more thing right here. This is the switch that I didn't was able to show you, I was not able to show you last time, this is the RS surfboard. Uh, right back here, we do have the um, internet coming in. This is one of the interesting things about this garage is that the internet is right there on that wall. So I was able to take the coax splitter, take a cable, put it into the modem, and now we have internet through the garage, which is pretty cool. Now, before you guys say anything, I have a couple of things to say about why I picked the garage in this location. First of all, this garage is kind of weird. It is temperature controlled, which means that it's not gonna to get too cold and it's not going to get too hot. It's gonna be able to stay within the range that is safe operating temperatures for this equipment and hardware. Also, humidity shouldn't be a big issue. We are in a very rainy area, but it doesn't get too bad. Just to make sure it doesn't get too bad, we have this right here. This is a damp rid bucket it dehumidifies the air just in case anything ever gets too humid it should keep it within a good range using a thermometer we it's never really gone past 65 percent saturation in here which is pretty good also this garage is not equipped for fires so that's not a good idea to keep your hardware in here but there's really no great way to that we do have a fire smoke detector right there just in case you know we'll know at least um, so that's pretty much it. That's all we really got for safety and everything in here. But just know that sticking it in my garage was the only option, but it was a viable solution because of all of the measures that are in place already. So don't have to worry about that. Also, the internet is coming in through here, like I already said, and it is the central termination location for all ethernet in the house. As you can see up here in the wall, we have three cables coming out of the wall right there. That is coming from my office, two of them from my office, and one of them from the other office, which is directly above us right now. Now coming over from over here is another cable, which actually comes out right down there. That is coming from the ethernet port, which is downstairs coming out of the crawl space. All four cables then come down into the switch right here where they are all conveniently labeled. The router then takes the internet from the modem, converts that into a LAN, which then distributes through the switch to every single device. The switch then takes those four cables and the internet from them, splitting them out to their respective rooms. I specifically chose each location of our ethernet so that it would allow us to have a mesh network of airport extremes. We made a video a while ago, you can check that one out right up there, where we did a Wi-Fi extension of each router but actually this is a real mesh network. Each one is hardwired to the switch. So you're gonna have extremely fast speeds with no loss between rooms. And each one has computers and everything connected to each router. So that is why each ethernet port is going to specific locations. It's exactly where the wireless access points were before. We kept them in the same place and now they're just hardwired to the switch right here. 
And some of you asked why I have two ports in my office and one everywhere else. And the reason for that is I don't really know why. Um, I thought two ports would be a useful thing just in case I need a direct connection to the switch not going through the router. I've had several instances where it was actually already useful. Uh, one for testing purposes and another for when I wanted to try an SMB multi-channel bond. I needed two direct paths to the switch in order to access my server at two gigabits per second. So with that, I was able to plug two ports into there and then I was able to enable SMB multi-channel to get double the speeds to my server, which is in a link aggregation right now. And just know that all of these are 10 gigabit lines. However, none of this is equipped for 10 gigabit yet. The server, like I said, is in a link aggregation for two gigabits, but the switch is only gigabit. So that is something in the future if we may get, but we have those cables just for the future proofing. So there you go, that is our new networking setup. It was incredibly fun. It took a very long time, but I am very proud of what we were able to accomplish. It is really great to have all of this in a central location in the garage, especially because it is loud, so you don't hear it at all. And having ethernet in the wall is absolutely amazing. It's so cool to just plug in and get exact speeds everywhere in the house. And having direct wired access points allows you to have no speed loss as you move from room to room. This place is pretty much covered in Wi-Fi at full 150 megabits per second. Well, there you go. That is all for this video. Thank you so much for watching and your support throughout this entire project. If you have any questions, let me know. Check out those other videos and hit that subscribe button for more videos like this. This is Mark with that tech and I'll see you in the next one.